And in addition to that, there was another indirect tax on one item, that is, on imported alcohol. The amount was two lakh, two crore, fifty lakhs. Today, simply, when you will be little senior, the amount of relief which you will provide in adjudicating the various cases. In many cases, you will find much more amount you will dispense with. We have come a long way. We have come a long way. It is because of the economic growth, the tremendous economic growth which has taken place, which has placed India in one of the emerging market economy. Developing economy in the world, one of the fast-growing economy in the world. From 2006-7 till 2011-12, except a short break in 2008-9, we are doing reasonably well so far. The economic performance is concerned. In 2006-7, our GDP growth was 9.6 percent. 2007-8, it was 9.3 percent. 2008-9, because of the financial crisis, which engulfed the whole world, and some economists describe it as the greatest international financial crisis. After the Great Depression of the last century of 1930, our growth slipped down to 6.4 percent. Again, we recovered. 2009-10 and 2010-11, we registered 8.4 percent GDP growth. But again, we slipped. 2011-12, it was. 6.5 percent, mainly because of the world economy has not yet recovered, and we cannot live in isolation. You have noticed in course of your service, you will come to know how world economy is behaving, and over the years. World has really emerged as an extended global village. Therefore, the happenings in one part of the country affect the other part. Take the crisis in the Europe, which is popularly known as the Eurozone crisis. One of the most important ingredient of that crisis is high sovereign debt. Some of the countries are having as high as 120 to 130 percent of their GDP as sovereign debt. No country can bear this level of indebtedness, and naturally, it had its impact not only in their respective territorial jurisdiction. It has affected whole of Europe, and it has affected. Emerging economies like ours, because till today, despite substantial diversification of our exports, both in terms of destination and in terms of commodity of baskets, 33 to 36 percent of our total export are destined towards Europe, and there is no demand. Naturally, it has affected us. It has affected us in terms of FDI. It has affected us in terms of FII. Non-availability of FDI and FII, on the one hand, and on the other hand, another international development of high and volatile commodity prices, particularly the oil prices. Which has caused 
dearly to Indian economy. I remember when I entered into the government during my last tenure in May 2004, of course not as finance minister but as defense minister. But still I remember we used to buy petrol at the cost of $36 per barrel. That was the cost of imported crude. And our total requirement of imported crude is around 110 to 120 billion, 120 million ton. One can easily imagine if cost of petroleum crude increases from 36 40 dollars per barrel to 115 to 120 dollars per barrel what enormous price one country is to pay that has created the problem in the balance of payment therefore the short point which i am trying to drive at that development in one country nowadays affects the other country. But there is no room of despondency. Thanks to the Indian farmers, entrepreneurs, young business leaders, officers, technicians, and particularly the demographic dividend which we have received. The land of oldest civilization has emerged as a land of the younger people in terms of age by 2030. India will be the youngest populous country because 50 percent of our population will be in the age group of 30 or below. And our young men and women having confidence in them, they have accepted this challenge and despite their adversary, they have moved on. Therefore, I would like to keep you in mind that as civil servant entering into one of the most prestigious services, which as I mentioned, at the very beginning will provide the lifeline to the government which is dedicated in a democratic system whose concept is not that of a police state but of a welfare state. You will have to keep that mind that your efforts, your job, you are serving the nation you are building up a nation. What attitude you will take towards your duty, your job, to a considerable extent depends on the attitude which you will have towards your life. Here I would also like to tell you a story which my teacher used to tell me very frequently when I was a young student decades ago. He used to tell me the story that one day a passerby while going found three persons engaged in breaking stones. He had a curiosity and a very inquisitive mind. He asked the first person, what are you doing? His reply was very prosaic and matter of fact. He said, don't you see, I am breaking stone. Then another person he asked, what are you doing? He was a bit philosophical and he found more meaning than what he was doing in his job. He said, I am building an abode of God, breaking stones for the construction of a temple. The third person had perhaps the little more materialistic approach 
and little bit doctrinaired by Marxist philosophy, his response was, I am earning my livelihood. The same job, three persons, interpreted in three ways through his individual attitude towards life, work and duty. Before I conclude, I would like to give you just one advice as an old man. And that advice is, enjoy your work. If you find joy in your work, if you can enjoy your work, there is no better satisfaction in life than this. Poet Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore beautifully put it in one of his poems. I am quoting the English translation of it. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold service is joy. To do your work with joy. Enjoy your life with joy. Thank you, young officers, leaders of the leader of future. Go ahead. Country is yours. Nation is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I call upon the respected chairperson of CBEC, Madam Praveen Mahajan, to present a memento to the Honorable President. Ready? Yes. Yes, ready? 